How's it going? So hello everyone, welcome to Jeopardy Bootcamp. I do not, I do not want to keep you long because this stream is about getting you ready for Jeopardy. Uh, you have been, <laughs> you have been here for, so some of you for four weeks already. We've had the opportunity to go over uh, American literature, British history, vocabulary, and Greek myth. And now we are going with Asian geography, which is cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, with that being said, the PDF you have today is full of really fantastic information today from Josh Wu. So everyone give emotes in chat for Josh, who wrote uh, some really great, interesting stuff in the PDF. You're going to read it later. Uh, he did this out of the goodness of his heart. He wanted to su uh, support the channel, and this was a way that he can do that. So uh, thank you very much, Josh, for all that you have done here. Um, some things I wish I had before I went on Jeopardy, uh, which includes um, certain countries' naming conventions, which I thought was super, super interesting. Because on Jeopardy, generally, Learned League 2, last name is what you need. But is it a last name or is it a surname? What's the difference between the two and how does that kind of affect everything that's going on? So you get to kind of learn as you go here. Oh, okay. Josh is going to give an example here. And what Josh just said, I'm going to read it out loud just so it shows up on, uh, on our uh, video edits here. If, so Josh's name is Josh Wu, but his Korean name is Wu Ju Ho. So if he was if he was the if he was the answer line or the response line on a Jeopardy clue, you would be responding with Wu, not Ju Ho. And that seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's something that you definitely need to be aware of as you go. We're gonna get started soon. Um, the first ten questions will be the top two rows. The top two rows are going to be your easier clues. I put that in parentheses, uh, not parentheses, in quotation marks, because sometimes they're not. Um, the next bunch, the next ten, will be the middle two. Uh, and the last ten will be the hardest ones. Um, Amy gave me a gift on question number 30. Uh, you'll see why, and I'll tell you a story about question number 30 at the end. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great game, and I'm looking forward to kind of going through some of it with you. Also, this will be a super difficult pronunciation day for me. I'm going to do my best. Um, not my native language, especially when we're getting into Iranian, Iraqi, or just Persian area words. I don't have the glottal stops for some of these words. So please forgive me if I completely butcher pronunciations. I will. <laughs> so enough of my blathering, because I blather like blathers. Let's get into some trivia. Question number one. The Himalayas border the southern end of the vast plateau of this Chinese region. So the Himalayas border the southern end of this vast plateau of, of this Chinese, the vast plateau of this Chinese region. Um, there's a lot of talk about freeing this area. And that's going to be something that's key moving forward. So Himalayas border southern end of China. You're thinking of Tibet. Tibet. The only other clue that you would have liked in there is the word free, which does show up. So keep that in the back of your head. Question number two. Japan's highest mountain, this dormant volcano, rises to 12,300 feet.
All answers on in. Japan's highest mountain, this dormant volcano, rises to 12,300 feet. Japan's highest mountain is Mount Fuji. Uh, people don't necessarily realize it's a dormant volcano, but it is pretty amazing. And you've seen pictures of it a million and a half times. Question number three. In 2018, with ISIS pushed out, rail service restarted from Fallujah to this capital city. So Bryn loves, loves, loves to make this pun at me all the time. Bryn tells me, she's like, Dad, you can never go to Iraq. I'm like, why? She's like, because you're not a bad dad. Answer is bad dad. Question number four. The center of the nation's film industry. This city is also the capital of India's Maharashtra state. This is an interesting one. So, um, a lot of people went with uh, New Delhi as an answer, but, and a lot of people went with Bollywood too, but Bollywood and the idea of Bollywood comes from Mumbai. So Bollywood is going to be always centered in Mumbai. Did anyone say Bombay? I don't think so. I'll double check. Question number five. The Temple of Buddha's Tooth is found in this island nation off India. For bonus points, since we have a social right now, and everyone seems to know this, what is this island, what was this island called before it was called Sri Lanka? Ceylon. Known for their exporting of what? Tea. Tea is exactly right. <laughs> Cylons. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Next one. Let's let's uh head on back to Japan. Hokkaido and this Japanese island are separated by only about twelve miles across the Sugaru Strait. I didn't expect this one to social the way it just did, so good job, everyone. Hokkaido and Honshu are separated by only around 12 miles across the Sugaru Strait. Okay, question number seven will include a word that I can't pronounce. And for me, as a top two row question, I think this is going to play hard. We'll see. About a mile off the mainland, Iran's Keshem Island is the largest in this strait. So about a mile off the mainland, Iran's Keshem, and uh, Amy will be able to explain to you a little bit better from a linguistic standpoint why I can't even begin to pronounce this word, uh, if you're interested in, in uh, linguistic stuff. Iran's Keshem Island is the largest in the Strait of Hormuz. Question number eight. 
the Congoran Elves, or Singing Dunes, are a popular tourist destination in this Central Asian desert. So, a lot of you got this, which is good. Um, Central Asian desert should be Pavlovian almost instantaneously for the Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert. Question number nine. This Russian lake, the world's deepest, plunges to 5,315 feet. So, quick trivia question in the meantime, while we're doing this, what is the deepest lake in the United States? What is the deepest lake in the United States? Good job, Troy, you're there. It's Crater Lake in, in, um, whatchamacallit, Oregon. Crater Lake in Oregon. Uh, and although the Flash gave me Lake Gorbachev, which would be a great lake, not just part of the Great Lakes, but a really great lake, uh, you're looking for Lake Baikal as the deepest, if I remember correctly, it is, it is just... It was created by a, by an asteroid, or something to that extent. Like it was, it was a big deal. Question number ten, the last one of the first two rows. This capital city lies on the Han River, about twenty-two miles east of Incheon. So this is an interesting question, and it's it's very uh, it's very uh, the timing of it is very good. So uh, get your answers on in if you haven't gotten them yet. Um, Park Won Soon, the mayor of this city, uh, was found unfortunately dead today. Um, real sad situation in South Korea as he as in South Korea, basically the second most powerful position is the mayor of Seoul. Let's go on to the next bunch of questions. We got more to go. These are the middle ones. So now we're getting a little bit more difficult. Keep that in the back of your head. Question number 11. Like Hong Kong in 1997, this special administrative region and gambling mecca was returned to China in 1999. Well, if you submitted, you have a social. So good job, everyone, for knowing Maca Macau. I would make a pun here. But instead, I'll just move on. Question. <laughs> oh, no. Question number 12. Cebu and Late. Late or Late? Are two of the of of the more than seven thousand islands that make up this Asian nation? So, seven thousand islands is a real Pavlov. Just if you're looking for the. The nation with, like, the most islands in Asia. You're thinking of the Philippines. Question number 13. Vientian, capital of this country, is found just northeast of the Mekong River. So 
So we have another social here. Good job, everyone. Uh, Laos is the correct answer. So good job. Question number 14. In 2018, this dividing strip of land was the site of a historic meeting between Kim Jong-un and South Korea's president. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take 38th parallel. So in 2018, this dividing strip of land was the was the site of a historic meeting be between Kim Jong Un and South Korea president. Uh, you're looking for the for TMZ or not TMZ? I'm just kidding. You're talking about DMZ or the demilitarized zone. DMZ. Um, TMZ stands for something completely different, and we're not going to get into that because that has nothing to do with Asian geography. Question number 15, our halfway point. You'll find Muscat, capital of this Arab country, on the gulf of this Arab country. So we have another social on this. Good job, everyone, for knowing Oman. Question number 16. This gem of a river becomes a 20 mile wide estuary between Hong Kong and Macau. Moo. So, this gem of a river. Whenever you think of a gem river and Hong Kong in a, from a Pavlovian perspective, you should be automatically thinking of the Pearl River. Pearl River. Question number 17. Follow all 3,900 miles of China's Yangtze River to the sea and you'll wind up in this metropolis. The term being Shanghai came from a time in which sailors were basically, you know, captured and forced to work. So the fact that you're following China's Yangtze River all the way to the sea, which means you're at a port city, would be a Pavlov for Shanghai. Question number 18. At about 10,700 feet, this land of the Thunder Dragon has the highest average elevation of any nation on Earth. I'm going to just throw some. I'm just going to grab this for a second. I'm going to move this over here. This flag. Oh, it's gone. I missed it. Come back, flag. Oh, well, it's gone now. Wait. Oh, here it is. This flag over here is the flag of Bhutan. Or Bhutan, sorry. And will absolutely be the land of the Thunder Dragon.
Question number 19. This country is mostly surrounded by India, though to the southeast it shares a border with Myanmar. This country, surrounded mostly by India to the to the other side, because we did have definitely a couple answers of 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 Pakistan, and that would be on the uh, that would be on the west, not the southeast. Uh, you're looking for Bangladesh. Question number 20 and the last one of the middle two rows. This sultanate's only land border is with Malaysia. So when you hear the word sultanate and you think of the sultan of a country, what is the first country you generally think of? The Sultan of where? You should be thinking of the Sultan of Brunei. Sultan of Swat too, sure. The Sultan of Swat. Let's move on to the last 10 questions. Question number 21. A large region of Turkey, also known as Asia Minor, is called this from the Greek for East. So a large region of Turkey, also known as Asia Minor, is called this. And the answer is Anatolia. Anatolia. Question number 22. Five countries, including Azerbaijan and Russia, border this large sea. That's really a lake. <laughs> largest, largest sea that's really a lake. I mean, it's, it's gigantic. And it's the Caspian Sea. Caspian Sea. Question number 23. This country's highest mountain, Kinabalu, rises 13,435 feet in the state of Saba on Borneo. This is a nasty one. So... Here's something you need to know. Borneo is owned. It's, 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 by the way, it's the third largest island in the world. And it's divided into four political regions that are owned by three different countries. Kalimantan belongs to Indonesia. Uh, Sabah and Sarawak, I believe the pronunciation is, belong to... Malaysia. And then there's a little bit left over, like a real little bit, and that belongs to Brunei. So Saba is your key there for that one. Question number 24. This country forms the entire shoreline of the Sea of Marmara. And this is a Pavlov. So Marmara, the Sea of Marmara, is the entire shoreline of Turkey. Question number 25. Four big countries almost meet in the heart of Asia. China and Russia share a 31-mile border 
that also separates Mongolia and this country. So we're talking about the four big countries. And if you're talking about size, there are four big countries, like really big, massive countries. Uh, two of them are China and Russia. Mongolia is gigantic, but no one lives there. Uh, mainly, uh, at least in part, because of the Gobi Desert. And the other one uh, is the greatest country in the world, and all other countries are run by little girls. Kazakhstan, number one exporter of potassium. Again, four big countries. If you're talking about the size of countries in Asia, China, Russia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan. Question number 26. A 1968 Chinese stamp, the whole country is red, did not red out this island. And the authorities soon recalled it. This one had two possible answers, in my opinion. Uh, one of them was Hong Kong. But Hong Kong was owned com was, wasn't owned by China at all. I mean there was no there was no um, there was no question about that at that point at least. The answer is Taiwan. Taiwan. Formerly Formosa, yes. Formosa would have been a correct answer as well. Question number 27. Phuket, the largest island of this country, has regained its tourism industry after a natural disaster in 2004. So, Phuket or fuck it, depending on who's talking. There's, there, there's that Queen's accent for you. The largest island of Thailand. Question number 28. During the Khmer Rogue's rule from 1975 to 1979, most of this capital's population was forcibly evacuated. So during the Khmer Rouge's rule from 1975 to 1979, um, most of this capital's population of Phnom Penh was far forcibly evacuated. Question number 29. A rugged 1,500-mile range in western Siberia. These mountains form a traditional boundary between Europe and Asia. Last call for answers here. A rugged 1,500 mile range in western Siberia. Formed the traditional boundary between Europe and Asia. And that's even, that's even, you know, weird. Um, there are people who argue about M Mont Blanc being, you know, where and w whether it's a, uh, whether it's Asian or, Euro or European. Um, but it's, it's the Urals. It's the Ural Mountains. And now we go to question number 30. For those of you who are here still, thank you for still being here. Question number 30 is a bottom row question that I got right on Jeopardy, so you should get it right too. Question number 30. Images from 1977 and 2010 show the effects of water diversion on this, once the world's fourth largest lake. So, funny Jeopardy story. You're, you're in your hotel. You're trying to calm down. They tell you not to read things in advance. And my friend, 
Jeff King messages me and Jeff says, what is the one geography category that if you get, you would be worried about? And I said, Asian lakes and rivers. So he's like, okay, go and study that. And one of the things I read was about the effects of water diversion on the Aral Sea, which I read the night before my day of Jeopardy. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate, I appreciate you all being here. I hope you had fun. Next week is religion and beliefs. Religion and beliefs. So definitely, definitely check out the religion and beliefs game next week, which is not one of my strengths, but it's going to be a good one. I hope you all find this to be a really great show. It's one of my favorite shows to do. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it helpful. Please let me know in chat if you do. And I hope that you're finding the PDFs helpful also. And definitely check out this PDF. Definitely check out this PDF because Josh Wu gave us some great information on it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>